ओके सो आई एम पार्थ सारथी प्रोकास था पी एस पी बुला लो चलेगा एंड आई विल बी ट्राइंग टू हेल्प यू इन द फिजिक्स सेक्शन ऑफ बिट साइड ठीक है नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई विल बी स्पेंडिंग लाइक टेन फिफ्टीन मिनट्स टू गिव यू अ बेसिक इंट्रो टू द आइडियाज और द बेसिक कंसेप्ट दैट विल बी यूजिंग इन दिस सेक्शन एंड देन आई विल ट्राई माई बेस्ट टू यू नो मेक यू अंडरस्टैंड Okay, so before we start solving this paper, there are a few basic concepts you're supposed to be knowing. Now, this is just going to be a run through where I just uh, tell you the basic concepts you should be knowing. Like I won't be going in depth here, okay? So let's get started. Fine. The first thing we're supposed to be knowing is Stephen's law, in that uh, we are basically given this. Now, uh, yeah. So in Stephen's law. Yeah, fine. So in Stephen's law, we can say that uh, the power dissipated or the rate of change of energy is given by sigma e a t to the power four. Sigma is Stephen's constant given by this value five point six seven ten to the power minus eight watt per meter squared Kelvin. E is emissivity of the body for a black body. It's one. A and T are areas and uh, temperature of the radiating surfaces. Okay. Next, we have Doppler effect. In Doppler effect, uh, suppose we have the source and ob observer such that they're both moving in the positive x direction. Positive x direction. Okay. So in that case, this and the uh, frequency of emission is suppose new, and the frequency received by the observer is mu dash. Then it's given by this formula. Okay, mu dash is given by mu into v minus v naught by v minus v s. Okay, now if this velocity, if this observer is moving in the opposite direction, suppose this is v naught. In that case, we can apply this minus sign here, and same thing in this case as well. Fine. So that's about uh, Doppler effect. Next, projectile motion. Uh, this is for projectile. motion suppose the body is moving in the upward direction like a vertical projectile suppose so in that case the total time of flight is given by t equals to twice u by g and the maximum height achieved is u square by twice g projectile motion is nothing but uh, basically a combination of two motions one vertical motion where the velocity is u sin theta and a horizontal motion where the velocity is u cos theta fine now again uh, instead of uh, In case of project, instead of just twice u by g, we will have twice u sine theta and sine theta here as well. Like we can just substitute it to get these formulas. And next, uh, range. Range refers to the total distance covered in the horizontal direction throughout the time of flight. So that is given by u cos theta into t, which is given by this. Like just substitute it all together. Fine, and we'll be getting this formula. Next, uh, suppose uh, there is a lens and we have white light passing through it. Clearly, uh. There will be dispersion occurring because of which uh, the light will get scattered into its constituent components. Okay, so violet will basically be at the will get most deviated or will bend the most, and red will bend the least. So yeah, that's why uh, the refractive index of the material with respect to different colors will be different. Now, if with respect to red is R mu R, and with respect to V is mu V, and uh, for with respect to yellow, the middle one, let it be mu Y. In that case, the dispersive power is given by this formula. Or you could actually write it as, in terms of focal length, as this, where f phi is given by root over f r into f phi. Fine. Next, in properties of solid, there is some, there is a basic formula that uh, be it length, be it area, be it volume, they are both given. All of them are given in this same context, where for length it is alpha, for area it is beta, and for volume it's gamma. Okay, for a uniform body. Now, uh, the same thing can be applied to resistance and resistivity as well, where this is the coefficient of, uh, like. Uh, Increase in resistance, resistance change with uh, respect to temperature. Next, we have uh, this is the formula for magnetic Lorentz force that is experienced by a, a body, a charged body actually when it uh, moves in a magnetic field in a particular direction. Fine. Now, uh, suppose it uh, this is the magnetic field, and a body having charge Q, mass m, and velocity v enters this field, normal to it. Suppose so in that case, the magnetic Lorentz force would be Q v v. Fine, because sine theta is ninety, and uh, this force will give the centripetal force for it to perform the circular motion. So it can be written as m v square by r, and from there we get this expression. Now at the same time we can use this to get the time period of oscillation as well, uh, time period of circular motion as well. Now time period is given by twice pi r by v. Just substitute this one here, and we'll be getting this equation. Again, now if you're talking about electrostatics, uh, the electric field can be written as minus dv by dr. Stating that uh, electric field is directed along that direction where potential decreases the steepest. Fine. Now, momentum can be written as root over twice m k, where k is kinetic energy. Now, instead of k, you could write <coughs> instead of k, you could write E V as well. It's the same thing. Okay. So you could actually substitute it this way as well. 
now this is your uh, de Broglie wavelength lambda is given by h by p where p can be substituted this value can be put in there and we can basically get an expression like this now for a particular for a specific type of particle like electron or proton suppose we can we can basically plug in the values here and for electrons we have this lambda is directly given as 1.23 by root v nanometers and for protons we have directly lambda is given by 28.6 by root v picometers fine now suppose we have a body that is uh, submerged underwater fine now if uh, not exact submerged it's basically floating uh, on uh, any fluid with a fraction of it submerged in it now what fraction is submerged for that we could directly use this that if n is the fraction of the body submerged then we could directly write this expression from where we can get that the fraction submerged given by sigma by rho where sigma is density of the body and rho of the fluid so if they are asked what of what fraction is exposed outwards just we will have to calculate 1 minus n now uh, if we talk about magnetic flux it is given by b dot a where b is magnetic field and a is area through which the field passes okay? now where uh, b dot a is given by b a cos theta where theta is the angle that uh, the area vector makes with the uh, magnetic field fine now if we do d phi by dd we will be getting uh, the potential difference or uh, the emf will be still be getting that along with the minus sign this is faraday's law while the minus sign is lenz's law fine now if you are talking about radioactive decay those are first order exponential decay reactions so they are characterized by this equation and on solving it we get n or r equals n naught into e to the power minus lambda t where lambda is the rate constant or decay constant now here the half life or t half is given by ln2 by lambda or 0.693 by lambda and uh, the mean life is given by 1 by lambda again in case of uh, suppose we have uh, a magnetic field b in which we have uh, any loop say of area a and n number of turns and current current i it will experience a torque that is given by this expression ni a cross b or niva sin theta okay now if you are talking about capacitors for a capacitor capacitance is given by c equals to epsilon naught a by d without any dielectrics now if a dielectric suppose this is d and suppose thickness t we apply a dielectric in that case c becomes epsilon naught a divided by d minus t plus d by k so if we fill the entire space of the capacitor with this dielectric in that case t becomes equal to d so if you substitute it here we get k into epsilon naught a by d uh, okay now suppose we have uh, an uh, a current carrying wire of finite length so in that case all we yeah so in that case if we want to uh, determine the magnetic field at a particular point right uh, just a minute now huh? this is not a very good diagram i'll have to explain this again Uh, yeah okay now suppose this is a uh, wire of finite length carrying current i and uh, we wish to calculate the field at a point p this angle is theta 1 this angle is theta 2 in that case we can write this b is given by mu naught i by 4 pi d sin theta 1 plus sin theta this is the field at that point now the direction can be given by the right hand uh, curl rule you could say so just uh, along the thumb current basically uh, just align your thumb along the direction of current and uh, the direction along which of the four fingers curl is uh, the direction of the magnetic field so here it's coming out of the board so out of the plane of uh, the paper is basically the direction of the magnetic field and its magnitude is given by this if it is infinitely long wire in that case this theta one will tend if it's infinitely long then theta 1 and theta 2 both will tend to 90 degrees so in that case we will get mu naught i divided by twice by d where this is d fine so this is an expression that we should be knowing at the same time this was for theta 1 and theta 2 had this length like if we were finding from at this point so in that case theta 1 is fine uh, theta 2 is fine but theta 1 was supposed to be in the left direction but it has gone to the right so whatever theta 1 it may be just substitute as minus theta 1 so that will basically be our uh, formula here now uh, yeah suppose we have uh, a string in which we have a wave propagating so the velocity of the wave is given by v equals to root over t by mu where t is tension in the string and mu is linear mass density that is mass by length fine now 
suppose we consider omega omega is given by twice by nu and k propagation constant is given by twice pi by lambda v equals to nu lambda so 1 by lambda can be written as v by nu so substituting it here we can get that k equals to omega by v or omega equals to kv next suppose we consider something suppose we consider a drop and a bubble fine so now in case of a bubble there is only one surface area a given by 4 pi r square I'm sorry drop in case of a drop in case of bubble there are two surfaces like one and two so the area will become twice of it where a is given by 4 pi r squared so u will be 8 pi r squared fine now for a drop the excess pressure inside is given by 2t by r while for a bubble it will be just double of it so 4t by r surface energy of a drop is given by 4 pi r squared into t while for a bubble it will just be double of it 8 pi r squared into t next we have uh, this topic of uh, wave optics where we are going to be talking about uh, interference fine okay so now uh, constructive interference dissected interference in depth i'm not gonna go right now i'm just gonna say you this one that uh, suppose we have two sources each having intensity i naught in that case if there is a, a part difference of uh, lambda suppose d lambda or a phase difference of phi corresponding to it in that case the intensity at that point observed is given by 4 i naught into cos squared phi by 2 fine where we can relate part difference and uh, phase difference by this equation d phi by dx where uh, d phi is phase difference dx is part difference is given by twice pi by lambda and suppose we want to find the position of nth maxima then x is given by n lambda d by d and uh, suppose we are talking about nth minima it is given by this twice n plus one lambda d by twice d and again lambda is wavelength n is the number of maxima minima positive or negative sign will just give us whether it's going to be uh, above or below the x-axis fine below the horizontal plane or cent level of central maxima or central bright fringe anyway uh, d is the separation between uh, the source and the screen while small d is the slit width uh, not slit width uh, separation between the slits fine so yeah that, these are the basic stuff that we're supposed to be knowing right now